A chef can make or break a restaurant. Service. But hiring one who can handle the pressure... Gonna have it now! Now, please! Sorry, guys. My fault. I'm out of my depth. ..and the pricing... Costing? I, I don't know. Well, I point at a plate. I want you to tell me how much that plate cost me. ..is challenging for many restaurateurs. You're not taking this seriously, are you? You have no experience at all. It's a nightmare trying to find a chef. I've got a tattoo. It says gourmet. But now, help is at hand. Good morning. Alex Polizzi has 25 years of experience in the hospitality industry. That puree is delicious. She has run restaurants with the likes of Marco Pierre White and has hired countless chefs. Why is the plate cold? A schoolboy error. She will work with four restaurants who all desperately need her help. This is a real interview process. You're interviewing chefs on the basis of their food. Cross-examining the chefs on their cooking skills. Where and what did you cook for the Queen? I can't actually remember what we did. As they hire a head chef to transform their business. It's a delicate flavour and you've killed it dead. You've got a bit of shot. Mm -mm. Just a bit of bone. I would not eat it even if it's given free to me. I have one word to say, mm. which is yummy. This week, Alex is in the Lake District, helping an award-winning hotel which has been struggling to find the right executive head chef for almost a year. When you don't have a good chef, your business can go from successful to disaster in, in not months, but, but literally in weeks. The family business means everything to owners John and Christine Cunliffe, their son Barney and daughter-in-law Zoe. It was started by John and Chris, my parents, in uh, 1987. When they saw it come on the market as a four-bedroom B&B, well, they just knew it was for them, and they converted it into what you can see today. We started out as four bedrooms, and we're now 26. The Lake District has 175 other hotels and two Michelin-starred restaurants. After 25 years of putting their heart and soul into the business, the family are facing increasing competition. Hiring the right chef would raise their gastro status. I need to become a destination within the destination. And Michelin food is a badge that will tell people that's what we're doing. For the right chef, they are willing to pay up to a six-figure salary. This person will be paid far more than anybody else in this organization, including ourselves. Our reputation is very, very important. After advertising the post of head chef, nine applicants have been shortlisted. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Over the next few days, they will all be interviewed on their chef skills oh and their character. Oh. Three chefs will be shortlisted to go through to a final interview at the end of the week. What exactly are you looking for? One in a million. One in a million, yeah. <laughs> An executive head chef, somebody who will really motivate, train and develop our kitchen brigade. We've got a great team, but we really need to want to take the kitchen to the next level. It's a hard, hard search, hasn't it? It certainly uh, has. Because I think we've got a recruitment crisis in chefs, and I think the key... You won't be the you, first to yeah, say so. I mean, we had a terrible summer. We had quite a few agency chefs during the peak of the season, and you have to just throw money at a problem. And, and we did. We had a lot of expensive people. Yes, but also it's just treading water, mm. isn't it? Yes. It's not actually yeah. developing anything no. or achieving. And any, leaving any... you in a constant state of anxiety if, yes. if things aren't settled and running properly. Mm. We want someone who has a innate ability and learned ability to manage margins and to be able to cook within. Yeah. Someone who wants to stay so, uh, for a while yes. and is not going to f f use this job as a, a one-year stepping stone to something yeah. that they really want to do in inverted mm. commas. And they can make or break us. Mm. Uh, I, I'm mm. fully aware of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, kitchens are a tough one to get right and to make profitable. So, let's, shall we look at our first three candidates? Yes. Oh, yes. It's an early start and today's first three chefs are en route. Simon Szymanski has previously cooked to Michelin star level. He has owned his own restaurant, but it closed after three years. 
he believes this is his chance to make his mark. I do believe you're born to be a chef. It's in your blood. You eat, breathe and sleep it. He's achieved Michelin star as a sous chef, yeah. and he maintained one as a head chef. So I think that's already kind of two big question mm -hmm. marks removed. However, there is a great big question mark there, which is he had his own establishment. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, what happened? I mean, sometimes your biggest mistakes in life are, 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 are the things that you learn the most from. I'm very determined in this interview. If you walk into a room, there's always going to be competition with head chefs sitting there. You know, that's, that's in our nature. The next one, Lee Say, mm -hmm. has never cooked to more than a 2 AA rosette level. Yeah. And I think that is the big question that I have. Head chef Lee has been cooking professionally for 20 years and feels ready to make his next big career move. The reason I love cooking is just the atmosphere is electric. It's colourful, there's smells, there's sounds, there's just about everything going on in the kitchen. This is my life and basically I go where the next position and the opportunity to grow and develop is. He's done a lot of pastry work, yes. which is very precise. The big worry is that again and again on this CV we see the phrase full kitchen autonomy. Absolutely. He may not uh, mean what I think he means. Let's hope. We, we can judge by his personality. We need a team player. Yes. Yeah. We don't need a superstar. I'm very determined. I'm just going to get focused and uh, just put my head down. Our third candidate is coming from France, yes. Nicolas Brenelier. Nicolas is the youngest of our candidates. He's applied for this job because he's looking to put down some roots. I love the UK. I love Great Britain. I love the mentality of the people in Great Britain. I love the sense of humour. The venue itself, plus the, the environment, any chef would want to die for that. I mean, he's got good experience. He has. He's had a wonderful life. He's had a <laughs> lovely time. I'm sure yes, he has. Te 16 jobs in 10 years. Oh, I know. The big question is, mm. you know, is he a stayer, a sticker? On evidence of this, one would suggest no. But, you know, maybe he's getting to an age where he's ready to yeah. make his mark somewhere. Looks really big. Beautiful. As a person, uh, I am very competitive. I'm here to, to show my best at, at my cooking, and uh, I will again, uh, you know, leave the, the judge to, to decide. So, guys, hey, how you doing? How's it going, Nick? <laughs> right. Simon, please to meet you. How you doing, Nick? Nick? Yeah. How are you? Where are you from? Uh, from the west coast of France, South Brittany, La Bourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, Yourself? Nice, yeah. Me, Coventry originally, but I live in Shropshire now. So. I'm just back in France since this year. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, it's all good. I think they're very good, and the competition is quite high, I think, by the looks of it, yeah. Anxious, nervous and anxious, are you? Uh, a little bit of both, really. You get to give your best, and, uh, but those guys make you nervous, don't they? <laughs> they seem uh, really nice guys and good chefs as well, obviously. A bit older than me. A lot. But uh, they're a bit older than me, yes. And, um, and yes, yes, I know this could turn into my advantage, but uh, only the owners can decide. It's important that the chef's style fits with the family's fine dining ethos. The hotel offers a four-course menu to guests. The dishes need to be visually stunning, show great skill with the best ingredients, and be cooked perfectly and consistently. Hello, guys. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. How's it going? Morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm obviously you? Barney, and Hello. this is my mum, Christine. They are the owners here. So all being good, they could be your, uh, your bosses <laughs> and this could be your kitchen. As the first part of this process, before we start talking to you in depth, we thought we would let you show us your cooking skills. And we'd like you to create a dish that would fit on the Gilpin's menu with the halibut. In an hour, we'd like to see your dishes. This, as far as I'm concerned, is the first part of the interview process. According to their CVs, they can all cook. They're all the calibre of chef that we're looking for, but it's very important to have it proved on the plate. This is a test of the chef's culinary skills and technique, with the owners specifically looking at portion control. I haven't done a lot for it lately, but um, I have done before, but um, this is just absolutely amazing to work with, yeah. 
I'm happy with uh, the portion size I'm going to do, but uh, if uh, Alex and uh, Barney and Christine aren't happy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> In terms of portion, I know where I'm going. Uh, in terms of uh, how to put it into a dish, still got a bit of blank somewhere. <laughs> but I'll get to it once I get to the uh, vegetables and, and the garnish. You can just feel the quality of the fish. Nice, tight flesh. Um, it's obviously extremely fresh. Um, and, um, yeah, hopefully it comes into um, a really, really sexy dish at the end. Yeah. A single halibut costs up to £150, so the chefs are handling one of the most costly ingredients on the menu. For owner Christine, portion control and price are key. This is a really, really special fish. It's also very, very expensive. It's more expensive than fillet steak. This is Atlantic halibut from Norway. It's a beautiful fish. It's got, uh, you know, the proud eyes. It's got the, the uh, natural uh, antibacterial sort of slime on it. What we're going to be looking for when the chefs get hold of this fish is we don't want wastage, so they have to have very good knife skills, or it will lose us a lot of money. The chefs should make a central cut that's as clean as possible to minimise wastage and damage to the fish. An indent on the bone should be visible on the flesh. They should be using seven to eight knife strokes per fillet. The bloodline and ligaments should also be removed to produce a clean fillet. This fish is all about cost. The portions are approximately 120 grams, which a skilled chef would be able to cut without weighing. We'll get about 17 portions out of this fish, and it works out at about £7.50 a portion. So the chefs have got to be very aware of the tightness of the budget on this product and act accordingly. This first skills test is a chance for the owners to see who might be a good fit for the job. I think every chef would, would like a Michelin star. I've worked in kitchens where there's guys that have had two, there's guys that have had one. It's about being consistently excellent. I'm confident that I perform and function on that level. Uh, if I was offered the job, I'd just be ecstatic, I'd just be delighted. Under the watchful eye of Alex and Christine, Lee's hoping not to fall at the first hurdle. How much are you aiming for? Um, about six ounces. Do you feel the need to measure it, weigh it, or are you pushing um, it? Down? I don't feel the need to measure it, okay. weigh it, not really. Okay. No. Six ounces, or 150 grams, is 25% more fish than the hotel would normally use, adding to the cost of the dish. So how many portions do you think you get out of the fish? Out of that size fish, I would have said um, probably around about 12. OK. What did you say you thought it was? Six. 155. Yeah. OK. Just a little bit over. So this is completely on the hoof. What are you planning to do? <laughs> uh, totally on the hoof. Um, I'm going to just cook that um, as delicately as possible, hopefully get a little bit of caramelisation on the actual fish itself, give it a bit more flavour, but retain all its um, beautiful succulent juices as best as possible. I'm How gonna... are you going to cook it, Lee? Um, I will pan fry it, pan fry it and baste in it in some butter. In butter. Um, I'll marry that with some of the um, samphire and I will braise some fennel and I will put it with um, some mash. What sort of mash at the moment I'm still... Um, hoofing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you've got a good idea. Thank you. I was surprised by the knife he was using. Yes. And he'd slightly hacked the fish about, I have mm -hmm. to say. Yes, yes. He didn't use a normal technique. What do you think of his dish idea? It's, it's too, simple. too simple. Too simple for yeah. a fine dining experience. Um, we'll have to see what he comes up with, mm. but it's going to have to be an amazing dish if it's um, going to be that simple. Simon has finished prepping his fish, but will his portions measure up? Over the years of my career, I've had the privilege to work with some of the best chefs in the country. The highlight of my career is definitely Michelin, uh, retaining it, and then obviously opening my own restaurant as sole patron. I'll cut my little finger off now if you wanted me. <laughs> That's how much I want it. 
over to you, young man. Did you weigh your, your portion? Yes, I did. It was uh, 122 grams, which is about five ounces. Right. So, yes. Do you so, want to how scales? many do you think you're going to get portions out well, of the whole um, fish? Out of the whole fish? Sorry, um, about 15 to 16 portions. What are you planning on doing? Um, hopefully, I'm going to make a, a, a mushroom ravioli, <laughs> we hope so, with uh, an emulsion of perno and uh, some uh, fennel. Uh, sliced fennel, really, on a bed of fennel. So it's uh, quite nice and light because you, you've got four to five courses, so you don't want to be over heavy and you want the guests to be enjoyed it, really. So, yes. Mm. How are you feeling? Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. Natural. <laughs> how, how are you going to cook the fish? Uh, I'm going to pan fry it and then baste it and finish it off in the oven, just keep basting it with uh, butter, really. So, yeah. So. Right. Thank you've you. You've got 20 minutes left now. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. From what I could see, Simon had very good filleting skills. I mean, he was very sore. Yes, and very confident. And he was mm -hmm. very competent and swift. He thought he could get about 15 to 16 mm. portions out of the fish, so that's not a million miles no. away. Last to present his portion size and dish idea is Nicola. I've been all around the world, from Shanghai to Sydney, uh, to New York, uh, and worked in amazing restaurants, working with amazing people. If I got this job, I think I would feel really proud of myself. I really want that job badly. How much is your fish? 120? 120 grams, exactly. What are you going to do to it? Uh, it's going to be pan seared in milky butter and moussey butter and just carry it on with, uh, to get all the, the richness out of this fish and all to keep it tender, just on one side, the skin side, to get it a bit crispy as well. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to put with it? What am I going to put with it? Uh, I still don't know where I'm aiming to, but uh, it's getting a, a bit more clear once uh, I get all everything ready. It's silicone, beautiful silicones, which are made from my, my, my area. So it's something also from the heart into yes. this dish. Right. Sounds exciting. <laughs> Look forward to it. Yeah. What did you think of Nicholas's filleting skills? I thought they were very good. And he's the only one who got the portion size mm. on the nose. 122 or something? 120. 100, 120. 120 so grams perfect. on the nose. Yeah. Um, he, when we talked to him, wasn't quite sure about what dish he was going to use. He, or he, apart from telling us that he wanted to introduce lots of textures, which I'm sure we're all in favour of, it's interesting that they've all picked more or less the same ingredients. I'm a bit disappointed in how little of the range of ingredients they've, they've gone yes. for. Yes. Um, I was hoping for a bit more creativity. The chefs have been asked to serve their dishes simultaneously. A delay by one could impact on the quality of the rival's food. Should have seen about two minutes ago. <laughs> and you got your ravioli done in time. Well done. I don't know about that. <laughs> right, you've got last couple of minutes. We'll be waiting for you in the dining room. OK, come on, you two. Let's go. Starting the fish pretty soon. Finishing up the sauce. Got to choose the plate now. There's a uh, sweet carrots, like a toffee carrot almost, like. Obviously, it's meant to be a bit better than that, but obviously, in the pressure, it's a little bit different. But it'll still get there. Very little time left, but just hopefully it's timed just so it's still lovely and succulent and uh, not overcooked, obviously. Time's up. A little bit longer. But Simon is running late. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, just, just throw about another two minutes. It's a maximum, not even that. Sorry, guys. No worries. My fault if it's uh, all gone wrong, sorry. <laughs> well done, guys. How are you doing, right? Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Amazing. So, just so you know, they were looking for 120 grams, so Nicholas got it right on the nose. 
Well done. Well done. Shall we start with Simon's? Yes. Simon's dish is pan-fried halibut, served with caramelised carrots, a perno emulsion, and finished off with mushroom ravioli on a bed of fennel. You're a few minutes over. Why was that? Um, I was just trying to... The fish wasn't caught done, and I wanted to relax a little bit, so obviously it was uh, perfectly cooked, but uh, I do apologise for everybody. I'm sorry. Shall we try? Mm. Yes. Right, so the pasta's um, made in haste. Yes, just a little bit, yes. Mm -hmm. So the raviola was a bit yes. disappointing. Yeah. But the, the 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 mushroom inside the raviola was nice, it's just the pasta itself. Yeah. Yeah. I could have done it a bit thinner, but obviously a bit hasty. Presentation? I think it's a lovely presentation. Nice, nice contrasting colours. But I just think it does not have that. Wow factor. Okay. Yep. The fish has wow factor because it's absolutely delicious and very well cooked. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a nice yeah. light dish, which I think is is um, works well on a four course menu. Right. Dish two, Lee's dish. Lee has served pan fried halibut, accompanied by creamy leek and parsley mash, served with braised fennel and a tarragon sauce. But his portion of fish is the biggest, impacting on the profit of the dish. I think, without further ado, mm -hmm. we should plunge straight in. So, to my thinking, the uh, fish is slightly overcooked, yes. mm. but I, I do appreciate you have been standing around. Um, you're all waiting on Simon. So that has been noted. Mm. I'm not mad about that dish. Sorry. Not, not in the environment that we, that we would be serving it in. It's, it's a bit heavy. It needs a touch of excitement somewhere. It's a comfort dish, you know. Don't get me wrong, I would love a plate of that if that's all I was having, but, but uh, I think in this context, it's, it's way too much. On to the last one. Nicola has cooked halibut basted with tarragon butter, French-style spinach, parsnip crisps with puree and braised mushrooms. So we launch in. Fish. Mm. Very nice fish, and I do love the fact that the the skin was on top and it's crispy. Some and exciting flavours in there. Mm. The spinach mm. uh, underneath is absolutely delicious. Yeah. You know what? I didn't like the presentation of this. Mm. I wasn't mad about how it looked on the plate, mm. but I love the taste. Mm -hmm. There's more complex flavours going on. We're looking forward to your signature dishes, mm -hmm. aren't we? Which um, obviously gives us a better chance of seeing what your your style is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Please do try each other's. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The first part of the interview is over, and the chefs can breathe a sigh of relief. But they still have more challenges ahead of them. I think it went OK. I was pleased that um, bang on time I was ready with my fish, and if it had gone out on time, it would have been perfect. Yeah, I was a bit late. I mean, I do apologise to the guys about being late and that. I'm, I'm so sorry, you know, so, but, uh, sorry. He did run almost 10 minutes over late, I think, which was 10 minutes on top of my fish was too much. That's nice. Tastes good. Really good. Hope it doesn't count against me. You try to do your best, you know, in that kind of matter. You, you, you really try to, to put your heart into it and, uh, and your passion. And it's very nice when, uh, when it's been recognised. Alex, Barney and Christine discuss first impressions. You've got Simon's there, which I think is uh, presented beautifully. And that was by far my favourite presentation of the three. I like how clean that plate looked. Mm. But was it daring enough? 
he did try and do a ravioli in an hour. I was just uh, yeah, about exactly. to say, he, but yeah. he failed mm. at achieving that competently. Mm. But the fish was the best of all. Easily. And, and you know, <laughs> yes, that is was. the key ingredient yes. on that plate. Yes. And that was, that was beautiful. Lee? I would love that dish at mm. home. It's comfort, but it's, it, that would be very filling. There's only three components on there. It wasn't clever enough and it wasn't exciting enough. So finally, Nicholas, who's the dark horse, because mm. although the presentation was a bit cluttered, the flavours, the combination of flavours and textures was fantastic, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was the cleverest dish by far. But I think there's still everything to play for, really, isn't there? Very difficult. From studying the CVs, I really thought that Simon was the, the strongest contender, although I still have a lot of question marks about his history. Um, but now I'm not so sure. I think you did well, boys, you know what I mean? Sorry, considering the pressure. I think you can all give ourselves a pat on the back. <laughs> well, then again. <laughs> As well as their cooking skills, the chefs will undergo a face-to-face -face interview with the whole family. A chance to probe them and find out if their character fits. So, do you always interview as a family? Definitely. Yes. <gasps> Any sort of management position, yeah. yes. Well, I think we're very clear about the fact that they have to like you as a family and want to work for you as a family. They're not working for an organisation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Our chefs will need to prove that they have the right characteristics for the job, a mixture of team leadership and good business sense. First up is Simon, who is looking for a fresh start after the closure of his own restaurant. Our restaurant was called Nomis Restaurant, uh, opened in 2012. Uh, closed it two years later. It'd be good to showcase what I want to do, you know, and, and maybe be happy again for once, like, you know what I mean? But will his past count against him? Why did you stop having your own business? I simply couldn't afford it. I just... So it wasn't profitable enough? No, it wasn't profitable at the time, no. It just didn't work, and I, I, had, to, I had to have a big, bigger man and say, listen, stop losing, stop losing, let's just close the doors and just get on with it. So, at the end of the day, I didn't have no backers, I did it all myself, tried it, got the T-shirt, it didn't work, so OK. Lee has only been a head chef at 2AA Rosette level, but is keen to prove to the family his passion and commitment to the job. There's, uh, I think, a great deal of pressure put on you when you take your first head chef's position, or when you sort of try and step up a, a level. Um, I think you do teach yourself a, a great deal. I've counted you, you was, I had full autonomy in five of your jobs yeah. and you've said that. What is your interpretation of that? Well, that's basically you, you construct the menus with whatever the food offering is. I mean, it's uh, very important, in a, particularly with an establishment like this, that you, you, you're sharing and getting a great deal of information from people that know the business inside out. So autonomy doesn't mean just doing your own thing? It means you've been made yeah. responsible It for. means, yeah, more sort of complete responsibility, mm. really. Having had 16 jobs in 10 years, the family want to know if Nicola has the staying power they require. The goal uh, of this, this establishment is to, to have this race to get the Michelin star. It comes from hard work, knowledge, techniques, finesse. I'm here to, to show my best. Nicola, there's really only one place to start with you. <laughs> um, France, four jobs, Canada, United Arab Emirates, Denmark, Greece, Spain, Holland, Ireland and England. What's wrong with the other countries in Europe? <laughs> um, unfortunately, I, had, I hadn't the time to, uh, to travel that much, <laughs> I'd say. But you've you're had, working on that. You've had a fun yeah. life. Why should we be convinced that that pattern will not continue? I understand your question, definitely. Good. And um, I know this can be a bit scary uh, as a move from place to place. However, uh, it's been 10 years um, living out of a suitcase. I'd like that suitcase to be put it somewhere for a long time. What do you think of your team leadership skills? I think I'm good because I do believe that <clears throat> I'm a fair person. You know, obviously you have to crack the whip when the whip has to be cracked. If I was to ask your restaurant manager what you're like at the past, what would they say to me? They'd probably say, good, gets hot-headed now and then, but that's it really. 
how good are you at the all important side, which is working to margins, working within the menu cost? I think the margins are good, but there are certain luxury items that you can't make a massive margin on, but you can make room in other departments, I do believe. So, yeah. In a sentence, I'd love to know why, tell me, why should we employ you? Me, I'm me, I'm very, very committed, I'm passionate, I'm loyal, and I'm very confident what I do. That's it. Yes, so. And very modest. <laughs> yes. So. Thank you very much, Simon. It's been lovely meeting you, and we'll see you in the kitchen. Thank you very much, guys. Good, good luck you. with your dish. Thank you. Thanks. Much appreciate it. See you later. See you later. Thank you. He's, uh, Came over very well. Very positive yes. um, way that he comes across. Yeah. And yeah. Um, bubbly. Um, and honest. I, I mean, I yeah. thought the way he said what happened to his own business was very frank. I'm definitely glad the interview's over. <laughs> it was pretty full on, to be fair. When you got <laughs> that amount of people in an interview, you're like, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I saying the right things and that, you know? I actually think that when Simon described himself as potentially hot-headed, I don't really think that's what he meant. Do you? I mean, hot-headed means... Yeah, I think he did. No, I think yeah. it was more he was saying he was uh, a perfect, more of a perfectionist um, and he likes things to be absolutely right. I'm assuming hot-headed means that he starts, you know, he can be quite brusque and quite mm. abrupt and he's not, you know... I would be surprised if that meant that he'd ever thrown a saucepan at someone's head. Mm. It's Lee's final chance to sell himself. What kind of work-life balance do your team tend to have? Honestly? Do you try to take yeah, care look after a, them? It's not a loaded yeah, question. I, I like to treat them as individuals and not just a position, basically. Do you like, enjoy the, the administration, the management side of it, or...? Uh, would you find that? I, I like basically everything, balancing and making money, you yeah. know. Obviously limiting your wastage as much as possible, utilising as much of the ingredient as you possibly can. Why do you want the job? Um, OK, well, brutally honest, it's been a while since I've sort of functioned at like a three to four rosette sort of level. Yeah. I've done a lot of two rosette sort of level. In all honesty, I would rather be focusing on the quality and, you know, uh, and with that quality, you know, you've got pride in what you do. We'll let you get back to the cooking and we'll look forward to seeing you later. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Thank you. Bye. I think he made up some ground there after his um, after slight... The after the cooking, mm. don't you? I think he's a very nice man and mature. Bit nerve-wracking, to be honest. Um, but, no, I think it went well. They're, they're not too intimidating. I would really like this job. The quality of the establishment, um, the attention to detail, it's just... You'd be proud of working here. You know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful establishment. I think what this boils down to is that he... Lee would have a way to go to grow for being an executive chef. Mm. I liked his honesty. Not trying to say things that he thought we'd want to hear. Mm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You could see him looking for the honest answer, not looking for the right answer, mm. which is yes. really nice. really nice. Finally, will Nicolas' Gaelic charm be enough to win over the family? How does your teams describe you as a, as a leader, manager? Um, I think uh, they, they would say, uh, I'm a nice guy. Uh, I'm one of the team, I'm one of the guys. Being part of a team, with the, uh, the leadership that, that needs to carry on this team somewhere. Um, you were an executive chef for a year. What were your responsibilities then? The position was uh, really being full hand on my department when it comes to orders, stock, um, hiring staff, training staff, dealing with suppliers, uh, castings of menus, creation of menus, and of course, uh, cooking. Have you got any questions for the family? Um, if you don't, you when can, can I ask start? <laughs> very good. Very nice. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I must say, I found him absolutely charming. Mm. But that was obvious. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I know it's so unusual. I have a croissant for a well-spoken, good-looking man. I mean, who would have guessed? <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Uh, it went well. The family is lovely. They usually ask you a question, why, uh, why do I think, how do I think I should be the best fit for this position? And uh, let's just say, give me a try. I'll prove it to you. He's got the charm to lead a team. Yes. He's got the most natural skill. Yeah. I, I think that our existing brigade would eat him for breakfast. Mm. I mean, when he, I asked him what his responsibilities were, he covered everything, mm. which was very impressive, and he reeled it off without any thought. I mean, it was, it was there. Mm. So it, he can clearly do it. I mean, it's, he's obviously mm. good. Mm. It's just whether he's a stayer. There's not a clear run winner. But there's not a clear winner yet. The Lake District has become a destination for discerning gastronomes. Reputation is everything, and with culinary standards forever on the rise, it's vital the family hire a chef who can ultimately gain them a star. You're very proud to win a Michelin star, there's no doubt about it. That's the benchmark. You know, we've got to have the best team, and we want the best chef. Gaining Michelin status is all about the quality of the food. Phil Howard co-owns the two Michelin star restaurant, The Square, in Mayfair. As the chef patron, he has first-hand experience as to why the role is so critical to gaining and maintaining awards. Everyone seems to think that Michelin is a complex formula of fancy tableware and decor and space, and it's really the bottom line is it's about food. It is about quality and it's about consistency, and this is the kitchen where all that goes on. A star reflects that the chef's dishes have a merit of distinction above that of other restaurants. Michelin like to acknowledge restaurants where there is a chef who is cooking from his heart, who has gained his experience, learned his craft, and perhaps come to his own conclusion about what he thinks great food is, and therefore has the ability to perhaps express himself in his own way. Other crucial Michelin factors are consistency and precision. Every dish must be as good as the last. It's all about building a team who understand the philosophy of the head chef. If I'm not here, the head chef's not here. No matter who's missing out of the team, collectively, we're still delivering the same product. And an inspector can visit on any day and any given time. In a year at the square, we'll have anywhere between 35 and 40,000 customers walk through the door. Perhaps two of them could be a mission inspector. And that's why it's absolutely critical that you have a team of people who can, who can execute consistently. Our chefs will need to show the family they have the precision and consistency needed for the accolades they are looking to achieve. Their final test is to prepare a signature dish that could sit on the hotel's four-course 58-pound menu. They have had time at home to prepare for this. So we're looking for a main course dish that total cost is between five and seven pounds. Exactly. OK. In order to be in budget, it's essential that the main course ingredients cost no more than seven pounds. Any more, and the dish will be running at a loss. What my signature dish would say about me is not heavy, light, flavoursome, up to date. I do believe it'll be a winner. Do you think this is a dish that would sit well on the Gilpin menu? Yeah, I definitely do. Everyone loves a milk fish, but the trouble is, though, sometimes it's not financially able to get it in because it's expensive. But uh, hopefully you can, um, you know, give somebody a bit of uh, luxury and uh, they'll enjoy it, so, yeah. What are you putting with it? Um, I'm doing a lasagna of uh, root vegetables and obviously some uh, diced vegetables, uh, saffron and clam cream with uh, comfy lemons and then uh, finish with curry oil. Fine, great. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Look forward to tasting that later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. This is a very good dish. I would say that all of those components would work very well. Um, it's it's quite safe. The cockles are from Morecambe. It's a very uh, it's got uh, lots of uh, regionality to the dish. I've had positive feedback about all of the different components of of, of the dish and the combinations, but. Um, I haven't cooked this dish in its entirety at all. Hopefully, uh, Barney and Alex are really going to enjoy the dish. This is truffle potatoes. It's 
gives them the purple colour. I've added the old Winchester grated cheese, which is the British equivalent to Parmesan, basically. It's a fantastic product, quite rich, quite strong. A um, little bit of flour to go with it. Um, classic recipe uh, for gnocchi is obviously the less flour, the better, basically. So I'm literally just going to feel my way through this with my fingers and try and get the best consistency I can. Right, what is on the dish? Tonight. Okay, the dish on tonight is um, it's a truffle potato uh, gnocchi with a um, English parmesan, which is uh, English the, parmesan. Uh, yeah, old Winchester. I think about as close as to parmesan mm. as you're going to get good. from the it's UK. Good. Yeah, it's it's lovely. Very strong. Um, hopefully, um, my gnocchi meets up to your expectations. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, I mean, you're taking dish. on a challenge here Risky with um, uh, how are you cooking the sea bass. The sea bass, I'm going to leave the skin on. <laughs> probably make it about 125 grams in weight. Of course. And, That's um, amazingly perceptive. I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying yeah. this dish, aren't you? I am, I am. Good. His dish is coming in at a much lower price at five pounds something. Yeah, so he's right on the nail there, and and he's absolutely right. The sea bass is is right in season. It's it's very good value, and it's it's an immensely popular fish. Doing this sort of interview, it's also putting yourself into uh, into a dish, to present yourself within a dish. It's a representation or of my where I'm coming from, and therefore it's a bit of my background. It's all happening on this section, isn't it? Food takes preparation, needs time, needs concentration, needs love. So, what is your dish tonight? Now, uh, tonight I have prepared for you a hot and cold dish. So there's two different temperatures and, of course, many, many, many sort of texture. We'll have the uh, a panna cotta of Saint-Jacques, of scallops. Mm -hmm. Then uh, a ginger crumble pastry. Then a slow-cooked uh, red mullet fish. And uh, and something else. And, and, of course, the <laughs> and of course the bisque. Is that all, Nicholas? The, um, the scallop? Panna cotta. I saw that, and I thought, you know, does, I mean, obviously it works. You wouldn't have tried it uh, today. I'm fascinated to try that. And ginger crumble. And, and ginger crumble. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. I'm kind of slightly dreading this dish. It's all happening, and um, you know, he's got to pull this off in every way. An eight pound sixty-four cost price. Mm. So that sends up warning signs as well. It does. It does. So I have prepared here a uh, sous vide uh, garnish, aroma garnish, to get the uh, the fish cooking after this in slow, in very very slow uh, cooking process at a slow t cold temperature. So f 54 degrees during 45 minutes to get this beautifulness at the, and without burning all the proteins and the good flavors of the fish. The successful applicant will need to deliver a dish that could sit on the hotel's fine dining menu, shows skill, and delivers Michelin expectations. Simon is first to present, and this time he's on schedule. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? His signature dish is roasted monkfish on a bed of root vegetables lasagna, decorated with diced vegetables with a Morecambe cockles saffron and clam cream and lemon curry oil, costing eight pounds and seven pence. Monkfish is a pricey ingredient and it has pushed Simon's costings well over the five to seven pound target price. The, uh, I, can I comment? I'm surprised that these aren't all the same size. Yes. <laughs> that can be tweaked. <laughs> Shall we try? Yes. I think the fish is a bit dry, isn't it? Unlike last time, when yours was the best. I love the base. I love this. Mm. The lasagna vegetables. I think that's delicious. Mm. 
I like the presentation, but somehow, for me, that isn't a dish I would ever choose. Let's put it that way. Well, I love it. I, like, I do love curry and I do love um, that combination. Can I ask you a couple of things that we didn't get to ask you in an interview? Yep. We kind of picked up on the idea that you said you're hot-headed. Meaning you shouting and screaming and throwing things hot-headed? No, no, not hot-headed. As in, like, sometimes when it's not perfection, I am just like, oh, I want it right, I want it... It's not throwing things or shouts or anything. I'm just, like, basically, like... I'm a, I'm a Virgo, I'm meant to be a perfectionist, so it's, you know, so that's that's really what it is, you know. Did it's... you worry about the, 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 those veg the diced vegetables when you brought it out? No. You didn't think, that, oh, that's not... Precision. No, I didn't. I've got a question for you about the costing. Yep. Eight pounds is a bit rich. Yeah, that is maybe a little bit too expensive for the, for the dish, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't do anything about it. No, so. no, no. Yeah. It's, a just... good, it's a good size portion. Do you want to take that with you? Thank you, guys. Thanks Great. a lot. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. So, I'm a perfectionist. I mean, the first thing I noticed was those bloody vegetables. <laughs> not cubed all the same size. Yes. I mean, that is a silly, silly error. mistake. Yeah. yeah. I thought maybe he'd run out of time, but he wasn't... He said he hadn't noticed it, which is, is really very strange. I would expect that kind of detail to be absolutely endemic it's, to his it, well, nature. It's pre yes, precision Pre and, con and, and uh, consistency. But those vegetables underneath were beautifully Beautiful. sliced and they were squared off. Mm. Well, gents, how's it going? Oh, must be working hard, all silent. How's it going? Yeah, good. Look really nice. Really nice. Well done. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Relieved now, yeah? Yeah, that's it. It's done and dusted now, so... I can just... chill out a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, somehow I'm slightly disappointed. Mm. And, of course, the fish was just slightly... Slightly overdone. It was, wasn't it? Which, which yeah. you know, this has been, uh, again, rehearsed and rehearsed. You've got to get the fish. It's a shame, cos this halibut was... Perfect. It was, wasn't yes. it? Yeah. No, I think I was, I was happy with it when it went out, to be fair. I was happy with it, then it just ripped me to pieces. Ah! <laughs> I wouldn't be here going through all this if I didn't want this job. I really want this job. I'll be very disappointed if I, I don't get through to a final, and I intend to give it my, my best shot. Hello, well mate. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Hi. Hello, Lee. Hello. Next up is Lee. Well, his dish is a grilled fillet of wild sea bass with English Winchester cheese gnocchi, Florence onion, and heritage beet gribiche, costing just five pounds and seventeen pence. By using low-cost ingredients, Lee's dish returns the highest profit. That looks very pretty. Mm. That is much more the kind of style yeah. that I imagine that you're looking for. Well done, Lee. Yeah. Good. Are you happy um, with it? Yes. What I'm impressed with, Lee, is I know that you've uh, you re-looked at the, si the portion size, you brought the skin up there, you've got the, the skin crispy there, so, you know, that, that says a lot about your listening skills. Good. Mm. What, what are those again? The... Mm. Truffle potato um, gnocchi with um, old Winchester cheese. Well, I oh, it's to, really nice. I have to declare my... Oh. really like this dish. Mm. Excellent. All I can say is try one of those. You pass the test. <laughs> I mean, this is a cut above your last dish, mm. I must say. I had a bit more time to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> and your costing is fantastic. £5.17. Right. So, you'll be glad to know that what they allow here for a main course dish complete costing is between £5 and £7, and you're the... One who managed to get that right. Oh, good. The fact that we can't stop eating it is a sign. You're definitely a head chef. We, th we wondered how you could convince us that you were ready to go up to being an executive head chef. Mm. I, I, I honestly think it's, it would be the natural progression for me. It would be my first 
admittedly. Um, but I do have uh, quite a lot of strong office skills. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll see you in a minute. Cheers. Thank you. How's it get on? Yeah, Boy. good. How did it yeah. go? Good. Yeah, I think nothing didn't after that, much. is it? They're happy, I'm happy. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Yeah. Fair yeah, play to you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm very surprised at how much better that dish was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I was, he pulled it, it out of the bag. <laughs> great flavours in there and, and, and shocked me too. And, and that's really caused my mind to be in a real muddle now. Yeah. But it's going to be hard, isn't it? It is going to be hard. Mm. But actually, his dish was better than mm. Simon's. It was. Who it would was. have guessed? Alex was... Um... Basically, she told me that I nailed the knocky. That was one of my biggest concerns. And yeah, they all enjoyed it. Ate many mouthfuls. In this sort of interview, anything can go right, but anything can go wrong as well. Uh, you know, it can bring you a lot of stress. And stress, if it's not managed well, can bring you to mystics. Therefore, it is very important to be very, very focused. Good luck, Nick, mate. Looks Good nice, yeah. Guys. Well done, mate. Looks lovely. Looks nice. <laughs> Nicola hopes the flair and personality of his dish will win Alex and the family over. Thank you. His dish is a pan-seared red mullet with tarragon butter and ginger crumble pastry. All served with glazed butternut cubes and scallop panna cotta. Costing £8.64, it's the most expensive dish our chefs have served today and well above the five to seven pound cost price. The colors are very, very pretty. Shall we taste? Try it with that. Very quiet. Mm, the mullet was cooked beautifully. That panna cotta is just deli <laughs> delicious. It's the idea of ginger crumble to me sounded like a bonkers one, but it really works. Mm. So go on. You're looking, you're furrowed browed. Certainly, uh, an adventurous dish, I and mean, this this certainly fits into the celebration bracket. It's it's it, to me, there's kind of uh, not enough textures for me. It's 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 all a quite soft food, mm. um, but I felt that it was all kind of a bit muddled on one side of the plate. Um, I, I can't deny that individual pieces are are, are very sure, clever skill. and great mm. skill. After the interview, we had a discussion, and I think there was there was still a question or two that you wanted to ask, Nicola. Can you convince me that your trunk is going to be staying somewhere a bit longer? Oh, believe me, my suitcase, I'm, I'm fed up to see it. I don't want to see any more suitcase, and, I, and, uh, and as a promise, I'll give, you, I'll give it to you once I, it's empty here. Your ambition is in your plate, I can see that. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Nicola. I don't think that dish worked as well as uh, no, all together. But different elements of it were lovely. Mm. Um, and it just somehow was all a bit... Well, it was all a bit of a mush. Mm. How's it going, Nick Roy? Hey. Done. Job yeah. is done. Done. It's finished now, huh? Yeah. Happy with it? Um, yeah, very, very, very yeah. Uh, satisfied with what I've put out, really. But uh, please, come, there's more left. Yeah. The uh, panacotta, have you tried to... Put it, it looks happy, look at this, everything. There's more of a story behind Nicola. Yes. And, you know, we just don't know half the story yeah. yet. I'm quite pleased I don't. <laughs> <laughs> From this interview and this sort of, uh, of challenge, uh, you get to know what the expectation of the owners, of the place, of the job itself. And um, we, we, we're also um, trying, you know, to show off and uh, trying to, to, to show your best, at least, to, uh, to these interviews and all. The interview process is over. The chefs have given their all. So there have been a lot of surprises today. A low was 
Lee's first dish with the halibut. Um, and then Simon gave us a fantastic first dish. And then in that last signature dish round, I just was very disappointed in Nicholas. And Lee came to the fore. So all in all, you know, at different points of the day, I thought that one or the other was ahead. Ultimately, thank goodness, this is not the final round of interviews. I was trying to find one person to go through to the next round. Gentlemen, thank you. Hi. First of all, I think from all of us, thank you very much. It's been a very interesting day, and there have been various twists and turns that we weren't expecting. Guys, you know, it's been a very difficult decision to make. But we have made that decision. Nicola, you know, your, your experience uh, worldwide and what you've been doing shows on your plate. It's very creative and we certainly enjoyed what we got there. But I have to say at this stage that we don't feel that you're ready to settle down. And for that reason, we're not going to carry on further. With, with yourself, but we'd like to thank you for everything. You. Okay. And it's been a pleasure to meet you. Right. Really has. Likewise. Simon. Congratulations. We're going to go through to the next round. Um, thank you very much. Well, if I can just add that when you go to the next round, you know, you really need to look at that position mm. um, and make sure you get that, that right. Yep. Lee, if I can just add that you, you were fantastic today and, you know, we, you we all much. felt as a family so torn by what you did with that second dish. Oh, you should be very proud of yourself. So That's please, kind. everyone, all of you should feel like you've, you know, we really appreciate what you showed us. Thank you so much for Thank your you time. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. OK, Thank you. and we look forward to seeing you Thank next you very round. Much. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Obviously, when you come back, we've got to get out to perfection. There's no room for error this time, is there? So. Otherwise, I'll be uh, packing my bags like the boys, and I don't mind. Perhaps I shouldn't have played it a little bit too safe to, to begin with, but um, uh, I did, so there you go. Perhaps that's cost me. Well, so my next move, find some stability somewhere. <laughs> Even though I, I tried to convince the other, uh, didn't succeed. And, uh, but yes, it's looking for a, a nice place to settle and, and put all this experience. Uh, in one kitchen. <laughs> I'm not surprised they chose Simon because on CV alone he has the qualifications needed, but he is going to have to pick his game up a lot to make any impression at all in the final interviews. <laughs>